Welcome to the lecture on introduction to sampling. Taking a proper sample is very important part in doing a really good research. To learn about proper methods of sampling, there are many underlying statistics that we need to learn. Why do we take sample? We take a sample to describe about computation. Generally, we don't take samples to describe about sample. We need to describe about population. That process we call as inferencing. Inferencing means we have sample data by using sample data. We are talking about population. We call that process as inferencing. The statistical techniques that we are using for inference or inferential procedure, we call them as inferential statistics. Generally, in population, we have parameters. In sample, we have statistics. What do you mean by parameter? Assume that population mean the average height of a population. So that is a constant. So parameters, generally we call them as constant because it will not change. But sample statistics, they are not constants because we can take many samples from the population. So sample to sample, there's a variation. We call that sampling variation. Let's take an example. Population mean of height is 160 centimeters. You take sample, the sample mean may be 158 centimeters. So this difference. This 2 cm difference, we call that as sampling error. The difference is 158 cm and 160 cm. 2 cm sampling error. But in general, we don't know the population parameter. That's why we take sample and inference to the population. We have two methods for inferencing. We call this process as estimation. For estimation, we have a method called point estimation. We have a method called interval estimation. In point estimation, we assume the sample statistic or here the sample mean as the population value. In interval estimation, we give a range of value because as sample value is 158 centimeters, we can assume that the population average must be somewhere around 158. So we can give a range, something like 156 to 160. So something like that, or 154 to 166, like that, we can give a range. So there are special processes to Calculate these ranges. I will discuss them in another lecture. But for the moment, keep in mind we have two methods those are point estimation and interval estimation. This lecture series is specially for non mathematical students. So keep in mind there are several mathematical methods to calculate these point estimators and interval estimators. Even though I have drawn sample and population separately, we should understand that sample is a component within the population. So we have a population like this and we have a sample within the population and one individual is known as unit. In human research, this unit may be a single individual. In agricultural research, one plot may be a unit. In research about trees, one tree may be a unit. If you are talking about water samples, one water sample may be a unit. What are the types of populations that we can have? There are two types of populations. One is infinite and finite populations. What do you mean by infinite population? infinite, so there's no limit. If the total population, if we can't list total individuals, we call such population as 
infinite population. For example, number of trees in a forest, number of fish in sea, infinite population. So what about total population of a country? We know that it is finite population because we have the registry. But as it is very large, generally we consider that as an infinite population. So what are finite populations? If we can list all the individuals in a population, we call that as a finite population. In statistics, generally we call finite population if the population is comparatively small. Number of students in a batch, when our research interest is about a batch, maybe number of people who are attending special program, number of elderly people living in the elderly home, those are finite population. Okay, one example. Assume that tomorrow 50 relatives of you are planning to visit your house. Now, you need to buy cake for them. So, the total population is 50. We don't know the total requirement. But assume that our total requirement is 5430 grams for them. Now, you don't know about this value. You need to take a sample, maybe from your house, and assume the total weight of the cake required. You take one individual from your own house. Assume that he is A and he generally eats 100 grams. So, 100 multiplied by 50, so you estimate 5000 grams, which may not be adequate. But you took the sample of one individual and you have estimated that one. Now the problem is, do we need exact amount? We don't need exact amount because there's no way we can calculate the exact amount. But 5,500, maybe 5,400 may be adequate for your requirement. Now assume that this individual is a child but here 10 children are there and all the others are adults. I'm taking one individual who is a child. We introduced a bias. So that's why we underestimated the total requirement. Assume that adult eats 150 grams. So the total requirement is 150 into 50 equals 7500 where we overestimated the requirement by taking the requirement of an adult. So what we need is to take a representative sample of this 50. You may take about 5 individuals including children and adults and you go for the estimation. So keep in mind when you are taking a sample you need to take adequate sample size. Adequate sample, which must be a representative sample. You have taken 10 individuals who are adults. Without taking one individual, you can take 5 to 10 individuals to estimate the requirement of 50, which we can call adequate sample. Even though you take 10 individuals, if all are adults, that is not a representative sample. So we need adequate as well as representative sample to infer us towards the population. I told you we need adequate samples. For that, we have to calculate sample size. We will discuss this in another lecture series. For representativeness, we have to choose the best sampling technique. So let's consider what are the properties that we need to concern when we are selecting the sampling technique. By taking a sample or after sampling process, we need to have an 
accurate estimate, the, which is total requirement is 5430. We need an estimate which is so closer to this value. So we call that accuracy. But we know that we can't assume the accuracy by a sample because we don't know this. Even though I say that as an example, generally we don't know about the population value. For that, we have another process called precision. Precision means repeatability. Assume that we take one sample, which is the estimation is 5450. You take another sample, 5400. Another sample, 5435. After repetitive sampling, we get a closer value. That means this our sampling technique is correct. As we do not know about accuracy, in sampling technique, we go by precision. If our sample is precise, we can assume that that sample may be accurate. But in general, without taking multiple samples, we go by one sample, only one sample with adequate sample size. Also, our sample must be less bias. What do you mean by less bias? In previous example, if our sample consists with only children or only adults, we overestimated or we underestimated the total. That is because the problem of the selection procedure. We call that selection bias. So there should not be bias of sampling process. So let's consider different sampling techniques that we have where we can take high accurate, high precise, less biased samples.